Watcher. My office really, really, really needs tidying, so I've decided to do a YouTube video instead. I have um, purchased a new webcam, so another excuse to try it out. The um, I did this thing for um, uh, the YouTuber Tori called Dear Writer, um, where loads of writers gave 30-second encouragements for um, other writers. Um, Attaboys, pats on the back, advice, that sort of thing. Uh, and mine was the only one that looked like it had been made with um, Vaseline on the screen, which was just because I've always used the standard um, built-in webcam on this fairly cheap laptop. Um, so I thought because this in this next couple of months, I am going to uh, get into um, being interviewed on YouTube, if anyone will have me and doing podcasts. Um, I thought I'd get a, a semi-decent webcam. It was £33. Um, and I've had this sort of uh, moratorium on, on podcasts and, and being video interviewed for the past 12 years uh, just because I don't like that sort of stuff. Um, and this YouTube um, venture um, of my own was to sort of ease me into that because... Um, that's the way the world's heading. Everything is is video and TikTok. And I've got this upcoming trilogy. Ta-da! Um, these are going out and, and hitting um, people's uh, doormats. So hopefully they'll be well received. And I thought um, that if it it will fly or fail, as, as books do, but if it were to fail and I weren't to have put in the effort um, to to publicise it at, at the launch like this, um, I would feel bad. Whereas if I've done everything I can, and then it <laughs> it plummets into obscurity, uh, that's just the way things are. So, um, hence uh, I'm I'm diving into uh, all forms of media, and I have accepted. Um, I'm going to go on um, Philip Chase's channel and do a thing with. Um, uh, the podcast uh, Friends Talking Fantasy um, and if other invitations come in I will probably say yes to those too um, oh and I'm doing a um, I'm remotely being guest of honour or one of the guests of honours at uh, the Imperial College PicoCon which is my where I did my PhD um, and I have to speak for oh god 45 minutes on fantasy uh, Lord knows what I will say. Um, so let's just do a little bit of news. And, and I thought I would end up, um, or the majority of this overlong um, YouTube will be about um, uh, my um, path to the published page. I did a blog on it a, a while back, and, and I thought I'd just skip through that. Um, it has some bearing on what I was talking about before, about people's writing improving as, as they... Um, put in the, the hours and the weeks and the years. Uh, so a little bit of news would be that, um, so uh, I'm having a bit of a Spanish renaissance. The uh, Red Key Books um, published the Impossible Times trilogy. Um, and I guess that went reasonably well because they then made an, an offer on the uh, Book of the Ancestor trilogy. And uh, this is what the first book's gonna gonna look like. And that's that's coming up soon, I guess. Um, and it's nice because uh, I was published in Spain um, way back in 2011 when Prince of Thorns came out. Loads of um, foreign publishers have jumped on, on the bandwagon. Um, when a new author gets a reasonably big deal, that sort of thing happens. I got very nice deals from Germany and France and a whole bunch of European countries. Um, and uh, Prince of Thorns completely flopped there. It sold almost no copies like... Um, in the hundreds um, and they used a very similar cover um, they call it the Prince of Evil but I don't think that would have sunk it I mean it's just generic rather than specific but I, I really don't know why it didn't do well there it um, some people have said that it wasn't the, the world's best translation possibly or it could just be national taste or an indication of quite how important a bit of marketing at the beginning is um, but the fact is it sold uh, like 0.1% of the number of copies I sold in English uh, and vanished without a, a flutter. And 
um, you know, since then it's, it's been published in over 25 languages uh, and sold, and the um, my books are sold in the millions. So, but the, the, the salutary lesson here is that if I were in a parallel universe, my experience in Spain could have been the sum total of my experience. You know, I, I, I could have sent the book out, got a really small deal, which I, I would have accepted because I never expected to get published anyway. It could have gone out with little fanfare and just sold in the hundreds and that would have been the end of my journey. Um, and, you know, I think it just underlines how big a role, call it luck, because it's the luck, even if it was down to any of the circumstances I, I mentioned, those are generated by, by luck. So um, I could have vanished without a trace. And I really fully <laughs> expected to when um, when I was published in, in the UK. Um, so let's hit this um, uh, thing. So this is basically talking about... Um, how I learned to write, how I got interested in, in writing and how long it took in its various forms. And I, you know, I read because um, I read a lot of books uh, by self-published authors um, and because self-publishing, uh, there is there's obviously a huge barrier to doing well at it, but there's not an awful bar large barrier to, to actually putting a book out. And it means people can get into print very quickly. Um, and sometimes the results are miraculous. Uh, and I've read self-published books that are, are better than pretty much any traditionally published book I've ever read. Um, and sometimes you read these books and you think, well, maybe um, there's, there's room for improvement here and that improvement could come over the years. Um, sometimes uh, the books are by very young authors and, and that doesn't mean they're gonna be bad. Some uh, freaks of nature can access all areas of human experience somehow intuitively at a young age and write brilliant books and some of us like me um, had to uh, learn about life um, through experiencing it and and then develop the ability to put some of that on on the page um, so I guess what I'm saying is that um, hopefully by, by illustrating quite how long it took me, it will be encouraging to, to some people who maybe are attempting to, uh, to get published. So attempting to build up a readership and, and finding it really hard work. It is hard work, no matter how good you are. Uh, books like Senlin Ascends tell us that, that you can write a brilliant book and it can flop entirely and, and no one will notice it just because it's so damn hard to get up that sort of critical mass of readers to make even a brilliant book. Um, of interest to the, the general public who have reading public who have so many other calls on their time, so many things flashing past them uh, that they should be attracted to. Um, but yes, if the if the if one of the problems that a particular book was was facing was the writing wasn't quite there yet, then this is me saying that uh, my writing wasn't there yet um, for decades and. Um, we can all improve. So, um, and I think if I just skip to the end, this this, um, this, this writing journey, when you, when you try and describe where something started, there is no start apart from when, like here, um, scaring my fellow um, inmates at a, at a nursery school, uh, you sort of freeze and two, three, four year olds um, with a story about a crocodile being in the, um, in the toilet so they all refuse to go to the toilet for, for the day um, th there's no one place where th this stuff starts um, but I, a, a sort of tur one turning point for me was um, in my 30s I just decided uh, that I'd like to go and try learning a bit about creative writing I'd done lots of lots of writing that's creative type but I, I wanted actually a teacher to teach me some stuff so I signed up for these evening classes and I went once a week for about two or three months. That was the length of the course. Um, and I found the place on, on um, Google Earth. It's, it was in uh, Great Malvern and we were being um, taught this stuff in a uh, uh, porter cabin in the car park. And it was in the winter. So we all never took our coats off. Uh, and it was uh, you find these, these writing groups um, 
in my experience, because I, I joined another one uh, much, much later just for fun, um, often have a, a lean towards an older demographic. Uh, I wasn't particularly young then. I certainly wasn't young the second time I, I went to one. And I was almost always the youngest person there. Uh, a lot of a lot of the, the people there um, were in their 60s and 70s. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, they have a lot of um, life experience to, to draw upon and also more spare time. Um, and I learned a lot of, of basic stuff that I didn't really, I'd never really thought about before. Um, how issues of how to use detail, um, things about head hopping, um, just the, the grammar of, of um, <laughs> dialogue, just, just a whole slew of, of um, basic writing pointers that were, were really useful to me. Um, and uh, just a vague point of interest here that the, the lady who taught it went on to, to write a, um, a book about visualization and imagery and imagination that are being key to writing. She was a very good teacher. Um, and um, she mentions me in that as, as the guy who was sat, spent the entire time in her lessons just doodling because that's what I do in any meeting or, or lesson. Um, and I thought it was funny that she'd written this book about um, how visualization and imagery and imagination are so important. Um, and, and they are. Um, when I was probably her most successful pupil and I'm incapable of forming images in my head, um, I just uh, leap to this. Um, I've got got, um, let's call it got, but it's not a disease. I don't even think it's a condition. I am aphantasic. Aphantasia just means that um, there is no imagery in your mind. When you think about something, there are no pictures. Um, and so, uh, and a lot of people say, well, you know, surely, you, you, how does your mind work? How, how is that possible? And, and how can you possibly write fantasy books of all things um, if your head isn't, isn't full of images? Um, and I do know what having images in your head is like because I, like many but not all aphantasics, I can see images in my head when I'm dreaming sometimes. Um, so I think all, all the only reason I brought that up, and you can read the article in The Guardian if, if you want, is um, just to say that when you're being taught writing, um, there are no rules and nobody is right when they tell you this is the way that things must be done. This um, this lady, Anne Palmer, was a very good teacher and I gained an awful lot from going to her, her lessons, but she has written this book about, you know, the way to write is, is to, to make to focus on the the visual imagination and, and I have none and yet I could still write um, and um, I'm hopping back here to uh, having written stuff in in school um, I found one of my old um, story books here um, and, and did a little critique of it but um, which was quite funny to me um, from 1977, uh, probably even earlier than that. Um, I was not a good writer at um, 10 or whenever this was, or 9. Um, and I wasn't um, a good writer when I uh, started um, playing d d in school, which was in 1977. Um, but... The act of spending years as a GM and writing up the, these dungeons. Um, Actually, I have one here. Thought I could hoist one out. There it is. When um, this is 1981, I discovered that. Once, um, when they're selling these large posh diaries off after um, after the new year, they're really cheap. So I, I bought these things up to write my dungeons in, and I would write enormous campaigns for my friends to play in. And that sort of writing, the description that you put in there, that that's writing practice that I was doing on a sort of almost daily basis for decades. Um, 
and when I was uh, at university, I played D and D, and and after university, I, I joined this um, this little company for a year that um, uh, ran a play by mail game, a fantasy play by mail game, where hundreds of people would um, mail in snail mail because it was before email their turns, and then I would write replies, and it was all happening simultaneously in this um, fantasy world where everyone was um, adventuring. So I guess it's a, a precursor on paper um, of uh, of things like, um, I don't know, World of Warcraft and all of this stuff, except that it was far more imaginative because it's not channeled into specific um, repeating scenarios. And we ran it out of this, we lived in this little house in um, Southampton, about five of us there, um, in the, the red light district of um, of Southampton. So there were, <laughs> there were literally red lights in some of these windows and, and prostitutes on all the street corners. Um, and the, the first day I, I turned up there, um, a, a bunch of guys drew up alongside me in, in their car and asked if I would sell them heroin. So it, it was that sort of sort of place. And the game was called, called Saturnalia. Um, ran, I ran it in my spare time for about a decade after that. So I was every night writing um, pages of <laughs> what essentially are interactive fantasy stories. And that's an awful lot of practice. Um, and uh, after that, that um, years later in um, the writing classes, after that I wrote a, a fantasy book and it was bad. So I'd had all of that practice, the lessons, the, the, the play by mail and the D&D &D, um, and the, the early storytelling in school. And I wrote this fantasy book and it was not good. Um, and then um, some years later I joined online writing groups and there I wrote another fancy book with people critiquing it as, as I um, produce these chapters and it was okay and, and you can find um, let's see somewhere yes so the bad fancy book I have um, critiqued the first page of on YouTube it was a couple of videos ago uh, and the OK Fantasy book is on Wattpad. It's called Blood of the Red. Um, and you can read it there for free if you so desire. Um, and uh, there's some um, Moby and PDF versions of it on my Patreon. And then some years after that, I wrote um, Prince of Thorns. And then uh, quite a few years after writing that, I was um, essentially bullied by a friend into sending out to agents and things took off. Though it was so, it was one of these, and it's very cliche, overnight successes that was twenty years in the making, um, and it wasn't even an overnight success. I think Prince of Thorns had a very good um, push from its its uh, publishers, which gave it an enormous um, advantage. But even then, it took probably took best part of two years before it really sort of gained the following and was clearly uh, doing well for itself. Um, and I say there, I, I sold my first short story in 2004. I think I got, um, <laughs> I kept the check, um, on my, uh, fireplace. I think it was for, um, it's hard to read, $31. It's very hard to, uh, to sell a short story. The, the short story market is enormously competitive and you get very little money for the effort. Um, and, and I published my first book in 2011. Um, by 2015, I'd sold a million. Um, I think I slowed down a little after that, um, but I have probably sold two million by now. Um, and you can just see that it's a very um, complicated path with many moving bits to it. Um, and it took an awfully long time. And at many of these stages, despite having had a lot of experience of writing, I still wasn't very good at it. Um, and I have tested my webcam. I'm going to um, close this talk down and see if the, uh, the result is in any way shareable. Um, but hopefully I have encouraged some of you would-be writers and people who are actually writing and therefore are writers, published or not, um, to keep at it and not to necessarily expect uh, to see the fruits of your labor um, for a long time. So really the, the main reason for writing is either 
you can't stop, which was was my um, situation. I, I guess I could stop if I did something else creative, but I, I do need to, to scratch an itch in that sense. Or you just simply enjoy it, um, which I also do. I enjoy it, right? Uh, and then if you if you don't ever get your million dollar book deal or more realistically your five thousand dollar book deal, um, you won't feel that you failed because you will have spent all of those hours doing something you loved. And if you had done some other hobby, like, I don't know, painting miniatures or uh, walking in nature or something and spent all of those hours, you wouldn't say, oh, no, that was a failure because nothing else came from it. And I think uh, the best way to approach writing is, is in that vein, um, that if you don't expect anything from it other than the enjoyment of doing it, you can't be disappointed and if you do it for a long time you will get better and there is a chance a small chance uh, that you you will um, take it to another level right i'm going to find the button to stop this and stop it see you next time